Hello everybody and welcome to the Alien vs Predator Galaxy YouTube channel. This is Aaron Percival aka Corporal Hicks and joining me as always is my squad mate Adam Zeller aka Ridgetop. And we are finally doing it. It's been requested several times and it's been a game, I can't speak for Adam here, but it's been a game I've been wanting to revisit and replay for some years now and I just hadn't got around to it. But with it being the 20th yeah 20th anniversary this year yes yes um it kicked us into gear and we finally sat down and have started playing or finished playing aliens versus predator extinction or at least you've finished it <laughs> well i, I am I still on my journey it, but i'm now again replaying it to record these uh, let's plays so it's, it's been one that's been requested quite a few times, so I'm sure there'll be a, a few happy folk out there. Uh, we've decided to go in the order that the game wants you to do them in, which is Marine, Predator, and then Alien. Uh, so yeah, that's how we'll be doing it. We haven't decided on release frequency or order yet. Um, maybe we'll know by the time this is uploaded, we'll see. But yeah, should we, uh, should we get into it? Let's do it. Yeah, I've wanted to revisit this one as well. Um, I have good memories playing this, you know, the original time on my Xbox back in 2003. You know, the hype for the EVP movie was going on at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always wanted there to be a re-release of this game because uh, it was never really backwards compatible like a number of other Xbox games. I think you um, could still play this on the 360, you know? Could you? Yeah, I'm fairly sure you could. Okay, maybe it it just wasn't Xbox One forward, but thanks to the power of emulation, uh, we can have it looking really snazzy here right. on PC. So your squad, designated Bravo squad, have just arrived on the freight to USCS Esmeralda. Esmeralda is loaded with newly recruited migrant work miners in support of Whaling Utani's mining project on LV426. Your LV arrival is... 742. 742, your arrival is the culmination of an effort that was initiated some four years ago when a routine whaling yutani probe identified this planet as rich in mineral ore. Since the discovery, the mining effort has evolved into a joint venture between whaling yutani and US colonial marines. Bravo Squad is classified as a secondary support unit, but an unconfirmed report of a violent outbreak uh, uh, not nearly fast enough. <laughs> forces us to investigate. Near a pipe assembly in your sector. There are conflicting reports of the incident, but the common story is that somebody went berserk and slaughtered a number of people. Your orders are to patrol the pipe assembly and investigate. Its location is marked on your map. Surveys also indicate there are malfunctioning atmosphere processors in the sector. Locate them and enlist a ComTech to repair them. During the mission, updates to your orders will appear in the pause menu which may be accessed at any time by pressing the start button. That, that annoys me that there was a breath in that. <laughs> the narrator of this game. Yeah. It's just like, you couldn't get every single little breath out. Of course, that's... Edit, that's edit your goddamn that. audio. <laughs> funny, it's funny, though, because I don't edit the audios for the Let's Plays. Only for the podcasts and the um, editorial pieces. So the story for this game is told entirely through those paragraphs on the loading screen. I thought well, I guess, it was a really good job. Yeah, and I guess a bit of the narration too, but he's usually just repeating the same information. Yeah. So one of the things, I mean, I don't know if it's the same for how you've been playing through it, but I, I end up spending a lot of time waiting at the spawn point. It's a little different on this mission because you don't have an atmosphere processor straight away, but it, it's a lot of secure an area, wait ages to amass your credits and then start. So that is probably my actually only real complaint about the pacing of, of this nature of game. Because otherwise I think it does a real good job at being tense and atmospheric. You know, Rich Dragsdale's music here and the bleeping of the motion tracks and just seeing them in the distance does wonders to make me take the game slowly. So yeah, I, I never got to finish this game when it came out when I was a kid. There's actually two reasons I, I forgot about this. 
my first copy of the game was stolen. Stolen? Yeah, I lent uh, my my first Xbox copy and my novelization of the film to a guy in school who was a year older than me, who was also a fan, and never got them back. Ah, never lend to acquaintances, man. I know. And I still remember who... I remember his first name, I don't remember his second name. So, Mitch, if you're out there... I never, I never forgot <laughs> this. But no, I, I ended up buying a second copy and playing it, and could just never make it past the final missions. There was one, one campaign I was on mission six on, the other two I was level seven of. And yeah, just never made it through. I've had an absolute blast replaying this. Yeah, I I always remember really enjoying this game. I can't remember if I beat it or not. I believe I did. I just can't remember if I used cheats or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I remember, I mean, coming off of AVP 1 and 2, right? We had this console game, which didn't quite get me like AVP and AVP 2 did for sure, but it was still, you know, the first kind of modern console game in that universe at that point uh, that I had played. So uh, from that alone, you know, having my Xbox for not too long at that point, it was, it was really cool. Mm -hmm. Were you a fan of um, RTS before playing the game? You know, the main one I got into was StarCraft. I know that's kind of Same. a popular answer. And a little bit of Warcraft as well. I never made it very... I played War yeah, StarCraft, but I never made it very far. It was like a fortress mission as the, the marine equivalent, where it was kind of like that Starship Troopers um, fort moment. That I never could never survive. I keep meaning to revisit that now. Well, I know StarCraft, uh, they did a remastered version uh, for Battle.net, and it's really good. It's really well done. So, what did you. Obviously, we just saw a. Um... The atmosphere processor. What did what did you think of the mini versions in, in this game? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's just for gameplay purposes, you know. It is a little silly to have an atmosphere processor that small when we've seen how big they are, but <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe it might make sense if you're only really making things more habitable for a small location rather than trying to terraform an entire planet. Like I, I also have to wonder if it's a bit of an intentional callback to Alan Dean Foster's novel of Aliens. Because in that, he'd put that there was like one big atmosphere processor and then lots of smaller substations. Hmm. Probably not intended to be that minute, uh, but I, I would like to think that that might have been intentional. And even if not, it's a nice little coincidence. Because it plays into that. And River of Pain, uh, of course, uh, revisited that concept of the smaller substations. I always like to make sure I'm stocked up on medics in this game. And Comtech. Yeah, playing through it, one of the things I've discovered is um, you can lose an entire mission quite quickly if you make the wrong move so it's always a good idea to be saving frequently and uh as you said making sure you have sufficient special units such as your medics and your contacts man those things just blow up when they're all used up huh yep that's that's some violent technology give me more troops me all of them. Seriously, I, I cannot give Rich Ragsdale yeah. enough love for his work on these games in this era. I believe we have an old interview with him on the site. Yes, a very, but very old interview. Probably about time to get back on again, honestly. I never really know how to talk to composers, is my problem. I don't, I don't, I used to play. And I can read music, but I never really understood it that well. Well, maybe this would enlighten us. <laughs> so 
So environmentally, a lot of the Copy that. a lot of the level design is very maze-ish. You know, you'll be navigating, trying to find the best way Copy to that. the area, or working your way through some canyons. Through the fog Copy of that. war. And I'm never, I'm not sure if that's very typical Copy of that. the genre, the the, the maze-like exploration. Like, I don't remember that really being something in, like, Halo Wars, which is really the only other RTS stuff I've played recently. I mean, StarCraft had a few levels kind of like that, but I don't know if it was a constant thing. But then th this isn't really RTS as an RTS. You know, there's not a lot of resource gathering and you're not building bases and stuff like that it's more like a it's like know, a rts squad like. best mm -hmm. yeah it seems a lot more similar to dark descent than you know starcraft god i can't wait for that game oh yeah very much looking forward to uh dark descent So, in terms of this, like, being the first mission intended to be played, how do you think, from a visual level, do you think it's appealing? Do you think it's a good first mission in there? Yeah, I mean, it's... At this point, it's assumed you've already played through the tutorials, you know, the basic and advanced and all your different species, so... I... I think it's a good introduction. I kind of like this kind of uh, deserty environment here. I know some people complain about overly brown areas in video games, but hey, some some landscapes are like that. And honestly, it kind of reminds me of um, the movie Pitch Black a bit. You know, the, just this desert okay. planet yeah. and that, or at least, that. or at least a desert biome of the planet. And that's one of the interesting things about this game is you have a number of different environments from caves to jungles to deserts um, and it keeps things interesting it's something that AVP 2010 did as well um, and to some extent too that's true yeah a lot of different biomes on LV 1201 was that mm -hmm. it yeah that's right so we also saw some of the game's bad aspects there with the pathfinding yeah, you kind of have to slowly guide your units from point to point because if you just trust them to go across the map, some of them will probably get lost on the way. So I, <laughs> I've actually uploaded the wrong footage here. So I've realized that I've not got the third atmosphere processor, although it does let me show off the waypoint. I've realized so you I haven't should got be the third doing better. Processor. Than yes. you're doing here. I recorded a second playthrough of this mission where I got the processor on the way round. So basically, here I'm just going back to a complete. Well, as the long as you finish the mission, we'll call I it did. good. Call it good. So, if you notice there, I can see the beacon in the fog of war. Well, not right now, but when I go back to it, I can just see the beacon in the fog of war. So I knew the processor was around here because general rule of thumb in this game is when you find a processor, you find a beacon. And when you find a beacon, you find a processor. But realistically, at this point in the game, there's no real reason to come back and do it because I'd already cleared the landing pad and I didn't need the extra troops. But as, I, as you're going around the mission, as you come up to this, um, you can... Obviously, find the third and final one and top up your troop count. So, bottom right, no, sorry, bottom left, you can see that there's a population cap, and that changes based on species. And for Marine, I think it's always 25. So, the good gameplay here would have been for me to have noticed the processor on the way round and top up on my way to clear the landing pad. This mission isn't actually massively challenging because the you face that first wave of aliens as you come into the landing pad and then that's it 
there's no extras waiting for you there. But what I'm showing off here is the waypoint system, and it's the way round the pathfinding, basically. So they'll go to each one of those circles first, and then move on to the next one. So it sort of guarantees that all the units are going the path I set them. And this one has a nice couple of alternate ways to get to the landing pad. So like when you played this on stream, you went to the left hand side, straight to the dropship. Whereas I sort of followed the maze around and came up to the top. <laughs> Having a hard so, time getting through that gate there. It's so bad. I think, I think I might just get fed up and just go straight to the dropship in this playthrough. Stuck in a corner. Kill that. It is also another reason I recorded I re recorded it as well, because I didn't want to quite show off the bad stuff straight away. Yeah, I've got I've gave up and left him to it, look. We still on the map. <laughs> Nice. And that is mission one. I did manage the target time there. I managed part time. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so to, to to talk about the environment, I guess I do think it's a little like when I, I I yeah I wish it had been a little bit more alien. You know, AVP2 throws you straight into a colony complex. It throws you straight into a hive on the first mission. A AVP classic, you know, you are on LV426. So it's visually speaking, it's a lot more alien at that point. I don't think that first mission quite hits that mark. But in terms of it being a nice sort of intro into the gameplay, into the style, it works very well. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, that's mission one. Um, we'll start moving on to mission two. Um, any, you know, everybody out there, thank you for watching. You're happy with finally doing Extinction? You know, sound off in the comment section below. Any memories from your playthroughs or answers to any of the questions uh, we were sort of asking each other along this commentary here? And throw down in the comment section as well. Um, we'd love, we'd love to read them. Uh, this has been Corporal Hicks in Ridgetop signing off.